Bismillah walhamdulillah wa salatu wa ala rasulillah. The virtue of a science depends upon its subject matter. And so the subject, learning about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, trying to understand who our creator is, this is the most noble subject. And therefore this science and this uh, uh, pursuit of learning about the names of Allah is the greatest pursuit. And so I'd like all of us to begin this journey inshallah ta'ala with the intention of getting closer to Allah and allowing this not to, do, not to be just something that is academic in nature, but rather something personal as well. It's very important to remember that a human being can never really know themselves unless they know their creator. You have to know who your creator is in order to understand who you are, why you are the way you are, and so on and so forth. And so, uh, actually, in fact, this is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us when Allah says, وَلَا تَكُونُ كَالَّذِينَ نَسُوا اللَّهِ فَأَنْسَاهُمْ أَنفُسَهُمْ أُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْفَاسِقُونَ And don't be like those who forgot about Allah. So, as a result, He made them forget about themselves. Those are the defiantly disobedient people. So Allah ta'ala is telling us in this ayah that there are certain people who they forget who their creator is. And when they forget who their creator is, they forget their own status as creation, their purpose, and so on. And so what's amazing about this ayah is that it's in surah, uh, it's at the end, it's in the last page of uh, uh, surah al-Hashr. And then right as you continue that ayah, it's the, it's the, you have a number of ayat that describe Asma'ullah, Hu Allahu ladhi la ilaha illahu, alim al ghaybi wa shahada, hu ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, and so on and so forth, that all these names of Allah start being coming out. And what's the idea here? That Allah is saying His names and attributes, why? So that we know who Allah is, and that's exactly to counteract the idea of not knowing who I am. I need to know who Allah is, and then I can have a better understanding of myself. When we pay attention also to this uh, uh, subject of Asma'ullah, why is it so important? Because throughout the Qur'an, how many times does Allah Ta'ala finish an ayah with one of his names or with two of his names? وَهُوَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ وَهُوَ التَّوَابُ الرَّحِيمُ Et cetera, et cetera. Allah Ta'ala over and over, وَهُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Allah Ta'ala over and over again does what? Mentions that and he is the one who is, and then he mentions two of his names. Or sometimes, وَهُوَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ شَهِيدٍ وَهُوَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ And that he is the witness over everything, that he is powerful over everything, and so on and so forth. So, we know that when you go through the Qur'an, you find Asma'ullah all over the Qur'an. So if you really want to appreciate and understand the Qur'an better, what should you do? One of the things that you can do is really do a deep dive, understanding the names of Allah, so you can appreciate the ayah uh, in which you find these names. Of course, we could study this just the uh, academically, which is to understand the names, their meanings, their locations, uh, and the implications behind them, which is what we're going to be doing, inshallah. But I'm hoping that you as an audience try to also make this a personal study where you pa uh, passionately and faithfully go through these names of Allah as well. And furthermore, contemplate them and ask yourself, how can I apply them in my own life? The Prophet ﷺ says what? إِنَّ لِلَّهِ تِسْعَةً وَتِسْعِينَ إِسْمًا مِئَةً إِلَّا وَاحِدًا مَنْ أَحْصَاهَا دَخَلَ الْجَنَّةِ Allah has 99 names, 100 minus 1, and whoever knows them will enter into paradise. Now this hadith is a very beautiful hadith. It's very much encouraging, saying, look, you just need to try to Ahsa, what does that mean? To memorize. It means also to understand the meaning, uh, to understand the implication, to call upon these names by praising Allah and also by making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by calling upon Him in supplication and prayer uh, and using the names that are appropriate. You know, if you are in times of uh, weakness, you call upon Al Qawi, the most strong, Al Jabbar, the enforcer, and so on and so forth. If you're in times of feeling remorse and sinful, you call upon Al Ghafur, the all forgiving, and etc. So, uh, this is exactly what Allah commands us when Allah Ta'ala tells us, Walillahi al Asma ul Husna, Fadu'uhu biha. Allah says, What? And to Allah belongs the best of names, so invoke Him by them. It's also, it's also should be mentioned, it's very important to remember uh, 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 that this hadith mentioning that Allah has 99 names doesn't exclude more than that. Uh, uh, this is not saying that Allah only has 99 names. Uh, names. Rather, we know that uh, subhanAllah, Allah's descriptions and Allah's names could be, in fact, infinite. When Allah Ta'ala tells us, Say, if the sea were ink for writing, the words of my Lord, uh, then the sea would be exhausted before the words of my Lord were exhausted, even if we brought the like of it as a supplement. In other words, we could 
uh, you know, try to write and describe and talk about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the most beautiful way and you could fill up pages after pages and run out of ink and fill up more pages and subhanAllah, even if the, the oceans were all ink, it would still not be enough. And, and, and you could bring more oceans and more oceans of ink and subhanAllah, it would never be enough. And what is the implication here? That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is indescribable. That's really uh, the, the, the uh, sort of takeaway you could say. But still, this is from a mercy of Allah that he says, look, just try to memorize 99. Try to live by them. Try to call upon Allah with these names. Try to remember them. Try to praise Allah with these names and if you do so then inshallah ta'ala you will enter paradise. The final two ahadith that I want to mention in this uh, hopefully brief introduction is that the Prophet tells us لا شيء أحب إليه المدح من الله ولذلك مدح نفسه None loves to be praised more than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does and for this reason he praises himself. So Allah loves it when we call upon him with these names and Allah loves it when we praise him with his divine names and so inshallah ta'ala I'm hoping that we all have the intention we say ya Allah I want to understand you I want to get closer to you and I want to understand your names why because you love to be praised and I want to be of those who please you and who obey you and worship you by calling upon these names and the final hadith I want to mention is this very beautiful very powerful hadith which I hope we all know uh, uh, we're all familiar with and it's something so important because people talk about depression all the time and so it's important to know the uh, uh, hadith about depression. The Prophet says, whenever uh, a sadness or grief strikes a slave and the slave then says the following words, then Allah Ta'ala will remove his sadness and depression and re will replace it with, uh, with a joy. So what are these words? I jumped over that, but let's, let's get into it. What are the words? The words are, Allahumma inni abduk, ibn abdik, ibn amatik, nasiyati biyadik, ماضٍ في حكمك عدل في قضاءك أسألك بكل اسم هو لك سميت به نفسك أو أنزلته في كتابك أو علمته أحدا من خلقك أو استأثرت به في علم الغيب عندك أن تجعل القرآن العظيم ربيع قلبي ونور صدري وجلاء حزني وذهاب همي. That the Prophet he's teaching us this dua which begins with saying what O oh Allah indeed I am your slave and the son of your male and female slave. So what is it saying? SubhanAllah, this is beginning, you, you want to address your depression, the sadness, right? So the first thing you do is you humble yourself. You don't, you remove this concept of entitlement, you stop telling yourself, I deserve this, that, and the other. No, no, hold on. First and foremost, I need to remember that it's not about what I deserve. It's about the fact that Allah Ta'ala is the one who deserves all praise. And He is the one who is all great. And me, I'm in a position of humility. So I am your slave, O Allah. And not only that, that even my lineage, my parents and their parents and so on and so forth, all of us, whether it be the men, the women, my mother, father, great, great, uh, grandfather, grandmother, doesn't make a difference. All of us are all what? Enslaved to you, O Allah. And usually, you know, uh, people take pride in their ancestry and in their lineage and so forth. And now you're humbling all of that. You're saying, no, 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 I humble myself to you. And then what? Uh, that my forelock is in your grasp. Your decision about me will certainly come to pass. Your judgment on me is certainly just. So whatever you have full control and whatever you decide, that is up to you. And then, subhanAllah, now that you've reached this moment of humility, now you start to ask. And how do you ask? You ask by all these names of Allah. This is how important it is to know the names of Allah. أَسْأَلُكَ بِكُلِّ اسْمٍ هُوَ لَكَ I ask you by every name that is yours. سَمَّيْتَ بِهِ نَفْسَكَ Which you called yourself by. أو أنزلته في كتابك or you have revealed in your book in your Quran أو علمته أحدا من خلقك or you taught one of your creatures أو استأثرت به في علم الغيب عندك so subhanallah which means or you kept in the unseen knowledge that is with you and so this all mentioning these names of Allah is implying what that yes there are certain names of Allah that we find in Quran and Sunnah and we could study those but that which is held with Allah that which is in his knowledge of the unseen subhanallah this just goes on and on and on it is truly infinite and so I ask you by all of those names whether we know about it whether any slave ever learned about it through revelation whether it's in the Quran whether it's in the Sunnah I ask you O oh Allah by all of your names what? أَن تَجَعَلَ الْقُرْآنَ الْعَظِيمَ رَبِيعَ قَلْبِي That you make this great Qur'an the spring of my heart وَنُورَ صَدْرِي And the light of my chest وَجَلَاءَ حُزْنِي And the eliminator of my sadness وَذَهَابَ هَمِّي And the end of my grief So subhanAllah, you can see here the correlation, the connection between Asma'ullah, knowing the names of Allah, calling upon the names of Allah, asking Allah by every single name and description that is His to do what? To get rid of my sadness, how? 
by getting closer to this Qur'an. So again, this is an emphasis of saying what? That the Qur'an is what is the greatest blessing in our lives. It's a miracle that Allah Ta'ala sent to this world. And SubhanAllah, within it, you find so many of the names of Allah. So inshallah Ta'ala, we ask Allah by all of His beautiful names that He gets us closer to the Qur'an. And one of the ways we can get closer to this Qur'an is by understanding all the names of Allah that, he, that are mentioned within this Qur'an. And inshallah, that's exactly what we are going to be trying to do in this series, Ta'ala. I hope you can be with me on this journey. Jazakallah khair. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa